For as long as I can remember, I've been different. I saw, heard, and felt what others didn't. I learned that I was given these abilities to help others. I'm a spiritual medium. Death is my gift. My job, to connect you to your loved ones in spirit. Come join me on the incredible journey. I'm Pamela Teresa, medium in the raw. It's been many years since my grandfather's passing, and since that time, I've had many others who have left the physical and entered into the spiritual. I have learned that our loved ones in spirit can help us in ways we never thought was possible. They know everything about us, and they see our lives through the eyes of universal sight. All they know is love and truth. All we have to do is ask for their help, and they gladly do miracles in our lives. From time to time throughout my life, I have been called to his final resting place. This is the place on earth that bears evidence of his physical existence. He was, and is, my grandpa. As a child, he was more of a father to me in a world with no heroes. Where every other male had abandoned me, he was always there. Nothing can replace the physical touch of those we miss, but now that they are with you, love you, and want to help you with truth and understanding for what is really right. The one thing about him I remember most of all was his love of the outdoors and fishing. He taught me how to fish and he taught me how to be silent in nature. He loved the simple things in life. He was the one who taught me without words the power of a spiritual connection. He and I shared a special bond in life. And now that he is in spirit, the bond is magnified. From the moment he left his physical body to re-enter into his eternal existence, there has not been a separation. He has been my guiding force. I feel his presence all around me. I owe him so much. And his universal sight has never failed me. His guidance from beyond the grave is immeasurable. This is where his earthly remains lie. But he does not reside here. He is with me. Always guiding, helping, and always loving. Some people, when they lose a, a loved one, they kind of obsess over their death process and their grave. And they'll visit the grave and decorate it all the time and become fixated on, 
on the figure of their grave, on the, on the image of their grave in their death process. What would you say to somebody who's, who's going through that? If it's a place that you need to be to connect with your loved one, then by all means go there. Uh, but open the doors to that communication and allow them to enter your spirit, if you will. <laughs> Their voice will come to you. Um, it's a very sacred place, the place of the grave. Um, it is physical evidence of their existence. It is a place where you go to remember, but along with that is the bitter. It's where you remember uh, their last breath. It's where you remember what brought them to the grave. Uh, so sometimes it keeps you stuck in their death where they're standing right there next to you and trying to get your attention through the squirrels, through the wind, through the trees, through the breeze, <laughs> uh, uh, tapping you on the shoulder, pointing you to the beautiful sunrise, to the beautiful sunset. It's, it's their voice within you that you hear them uh, saying, I am here, I am free, and I do want to help you. Uh, it's very complicated because it, it is a place where we go to remember them, yet that's not the only place where we remember them. They're around us, and so we see them on the shelf at Walmart through a simple soap or a, a hand cream um, that reminds us of them. Uh, they're everywhere. They love us. So there's a lot of physical evidence and memories. Uh, it just depends on where you are at the time. I, I really do caution people who are, who have really hit the depths of despair to maybe take a step away from there and, and try to find their loved one where they are, sitting in their living room, eating cheesecake and, and watching Wheel of Fortune. They're there with you. Is Will of Fortune still on? Okay. Anyway, uh, it's very complicated, but and I can I see it. There's a pattern of behavior with people who really get stuck in that grief process. They can't seem to take themselves away from that that last moment of breath, and and sometimes uh, you have to set yourself free of that. first encountered Pamela at the Alhambra, right? I did. Okay. And did anything come through the read at the Alhambra for you? Yes, it did. What was that? Um, she said there would be little breadcrumbs along the way, and the table that was next to me, the young woman had went up, and she kept talking about a broken arm, and the lady really couldn't connect with it. And I didn't at the moment, but I did later on. And then there was also tidbits along the way that made me realize, you know, that... Spirit was coming through for you? Yes. Okay. Uh, what's going through you right now before you get into the read? I hope that I can serve her well and deliver her daughter to her and make sure that the messages are clear. And I hope to deliver peace and healing. It's a big responsibility, you know, so I don't take it lightly. Lots of prayers around this one. What? Hey, how are you? Good. It's nice to nice see you again. Oh, thank you. Oh, you can sit right here, my love. Oh, okay. 
it's an effort to help others who've lost children as well. And so many who won't ever um, come to me, but they'll receive healing through your words. So it's actually like you're the one who um, will be helping people uh, because they can identify with you and uh, understand your pain. Even just looking into your eyes, they'll know, okay, I know that look. Um, then they won't feel so alone. Because, okay, well, if she's breathing, if she's walking, and if she can still smile, and if she can still live, I can too. So, I mean, it's just got to be, I can't imagine taking breath after that moment of, of, of getting the information that mm -hmm. uh, your loved one, your child, has now crossed over into heaven, what we consider heaven. Yeah. <laughs> but actually, compared to the space, it is heaven. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, what were some of your thoughts coming into this read today? Oh my goodness. Um, I guess just reassurance, yes. you know, and you just want that, you know, that reassurance, even though you know, you know, and just to know how maybe I can better connect yes. with her because I don't, you know, I'm untrained to know the signs and, you know, and. I mean, you have the feelings. Does she have your eyes? Um, to a the degree. The shape. Yes. I see wait, how you smile with your eyes. Yeah. Um, I see her in that way. Um, uh, so, so beauty. Uh, even more so, because when you can see the, the, see, I can, it's, the eyes are the window of the soul anyway. But, but there's that bit in the physical um, evidence of which you shared with her. Uh, does that come through your father? Okay, so anyway, that's what, is he in the spirit world as well? Yeah. Okay, who's the male that uh, was important to your father? Anyway, so we have generations past who are connecting. Would, be the, would this be his mother's father? <laughs> we have a lot of people here um, helping and assisting your daughter. Um, and uh, I think the theme of this read in so many ways and what they're laying out, because I have three present here. A female, your daughter, mm -hmm. and also a male, a male connected to your father's side, but I do believe it's through his mother's side. See how complicated this can be? Yes. Um, and, and the theme of this read is going to be through, through their eyes, through your eyes, uh, because they're already talking about that as it's being relevant, being important. Um, and also, too, they're talking to me about how uh, recently you've been looking in the mirror and just like you can see generations past. It's very interesting. Does that make sense to where they're communicating with you on this? And yes. so you think you might be going crazy because <laughs> it's just like real quick blips of thought. Yeah. Um, but they're there. And so that's why, so you're not hallucinating. That's <laughs> why you're, you're thinking of them. And even those who you don't even know. Uh, anyway, that's her way of bringing, you know, bringing in uh, a large crew to help her help you because she's not alone in this and so she's been talking to me this morning about how she uh, immediately started connecting with others who who know your story who know uh, uh, her father's story who know uh, her grandparents story and so she had the whole layout she's quite fascinated by that when she transitioned she really wanted to get uh, a connection to so that way she could work with them because they were already understanding what was going on on the ground and so she got a real quick education as to um, the story behind the story behind the story the reasons why um, now uh, are you still with her father yes okay and he's he's here in the physical yes okay um, she says and this is um, she needs you to know that she really understands her father's path and she's, she's come to a great amount of healing and understanding uh, about her dad. And that was, that was like one of the first things. Um, so there's a connection with that, with his mother and with his mother's father. So there's something there that you might be able to validate or you may know yourself um, as to where there's a process where she's been working diligently to help heal her, her father, her dad in, in so many ways. So, it's, she says, it's even beyond my story, Mom. She says, so uh, I, I saw the whole layout, the whole 
uh, tapestry of, of both of y'all and where y'all needed help. So she's very much a little busy bee. She's very uh -huh. much. She's taking me on this journey. Um, was there a pine tree where it shouldn't have been? She's showing me a vision of I'm standing there and there's this pine tree. But it's not like the pine trees we have here. Yeah, she was not here. She was uh, in Ohio. Okay. Okay. So I don't know what kind of pine trees they have or what kind of trees, but it seemed to be a lonesome tree. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> Who was wanted? What was going on at the time? Is that connected to her son? What do you know about her son? This is what she's talking about. Oh my goodness. I'm sorry. It's okay. She's like, it's okay, Mom. We're helping people, that's what I want to do. She's like, I couldn't help people like I wanted to when I was here. I'm just taken, I'm sorry, I, you didn't know, I mean. She knows. I, I, I know. She knows everything. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That's been a struggle. Yeah. So your hell is layered. I'm sorry. No, no, dude, no, no apologies because look, like, this is people need to understand the sacredness of this work. Yeah. The sanctity she's my she's my architect. She's my guiding force right now. Nothing is being done in this read without her direction. I mean, I am seriously locked into being her servant. And so uh, I tell people all the time my greatest gift is I'm an idiot in the way of I let my human side go and I really I give myself to them in the way of I blindly follow. I have a, that faith in, in what she's doing here. And even sometimes it's a rocky ride. And, and the places that she'll take me, even though my physical body's here and I'm, I'm mentally attached to you, and it seems like I'm right here, she takes me a lot of different places and so the spirit at the same time of the read. Um, so the trees are very, very, very important to her. She once said she was a tree hugger. She, she, they, and so she will give you great visions of trees. She will put trees in your path where you shouldn't see a tree, and there it is, and that's her. She really was tired in the physical. She was talking to me all week about how, you know, my physical body felt so heavy. And I felt that there was a separation coming in. And so there's the month of May, she says, is being relevant here. Um, and that... She was talking to me earlier this week about, you know how it is where you have a kite up in the air and let's, let's put a weight on the bottom of it. She said that weight, the bottom of the string, uh, that's the physical body. And then that string is kind of like that link to the physical, to the soul. And the kite is the soul flying free. And she said that she felt separated from her physical body so often and that her physical body felt so heavy. And uh, so that was part of the process of what had been going through her uh, before she passed. Is there anything you'd like to say about uh, your experience? Uh, I have to say, you know, even though I believed I was, there was skeptic and she just blew me away with um, things that she said that there's no possible way she could have known, you know. I mean, 
the, there was just so much information, you know, that um, no one could have known those things, you know. So you, just, she could have known. <laughs> and I, and um, even knowing their personalities, you know, and uh, I mean, how could she possibly know their personalities, you know, and those are just things that I was just in awe. I mean, it was almost, it would take your breath, you know, because you would realize, you know, that that was the person that you loved that is still living, you know, that that's the biggest thing is when you lose someone, you know, you think, all you think of is death, you know, but they're very much still alive. I brought pictures to sew. Oh, sweet. Yeah, see, that's her hair. Mm -hmm. That's the way she's supposed to look, mm -hmm. right there. Yeah, she's and um, she's oh, gorgeous. She's She was. Christy. Yeah, before definitely. They, mm -hmm. <laughs> before they got there. Yeah, that's sweet. a much younger version of me. <laughs> much. Yes. Much, much. Yes, yeah, she reminds me of you. Yeah. Okay. Goodbye, hon. Oh, Bye, yes. Hun. You are fantastic. Thank you. So sweet. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, my gosh. It was medicine for the soul. Yes. That's all I can say. It really was. They're the only answer. They're the only ones that can help us. You know, I didn't, I was so scary coming in here, you know, and I um, thought, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to drive home, but I'm leaving here feeling so much better. Yeah. Like a ton of bricks have been lifted yeah. off of me, literally. Yeah. She you worked know? hard on that, didn't she? Yeah. I was just talking to her, I'm like, wow, you were one heavy lifter here. <laughs> She's like, mm. yeah. <laughs> yeah.